Hi, my name's Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables. I thought I'd give you a rundown on how to use Barnes & Noble Press. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think it's useful for people to see how the process works before they start it. And the only thing I've deliberately left out is the registration process, which is not complicated, but it depends on which country you're in as to how you fill in the tax bits. So I will cover that in a separate video. Everybody concentrates on KDP Amazon, which is usually the first port of call, and I use that too. But Barnes & Noble is also a free publishing site and extremely useful for the extra distribution in the USA. It covers UK and I believe some of Europe as well, but I don't think you can do self-publishing in the UK. I've certainly not seen a, an access to it. But the Barnes & Noble Press is very simple to use and I thought I would do a rundown of the process and the steps that you go through, just in case anybody has a few misgivings about it. On the basis that you've already got your interior file set up in a PDF format and a cover page, uh, you can do this in either a back and a front or a double spread like you do in Amazon. Also in a PDF version, this is where you start. You're having set up your account, which is normal straightforward registration you'll come to this page where your projects are listed and you can see I've already got some published already. So we're gonna click on the create a new book and you have the option of an ebook or a print book. We're going to do a print book and you click on next, which takes you through to where you put your book title in. So we'll just uh, type in anything for the time being. Uh, next again, you we're going to sell the book, not keep it personal, though you can do that as well, clearly click on next and we're not going to go for it's a pre-order but this is like uh, Amazon's pre-orders in that you can set everything up ready and it gets published uh, sorry not published it gets promoted beforehand but so we're going to say no it's not and next here you're going to set the estimated page count now um, they do say that they have a minimum of 40 pages but it does start at 18 here. I haven't tested that. So we'll, we'll do the, the minimum for 18 to 15. In fact, no, we won't. We're going to do uh, 51 to 100 because that's the rough size of most of my books and I can give you a better idea of costings. Uh, for page sizes, you have a lot to choose from. So we're going to go for letter, which is the standard size I use for coloring books. We're going to print on uh, in black and white for the interior. We're going to choose paperback because that is the cheapest option and the most logical for a colouring book, which is what I have in mind here. I like a gloss cover, but you can have matte and you only have the choice of white paper inside. Now, straight away, you can see you get the printing costs so you can tell whether or not your page count is going to be viable to actually use. So we'll save and continue here. And then you get to the point where you need to determine your page sizes. Now you can go through page by page and I'll do that here so you can see what it's like. But if you have already got your file set up and you know your page sizes are accurate and fit within these recommendations, you can skip straight through to upload your file. But otherwise you can take it page by page so you can see exactly what they require. So the size of the book is the standard 11 by 8.5 for letter with a half inch margin all around. This red line is the bleed line. So anything that is outside of the 8.5 by 11 will get cut off. That's fairly standard and Amazon do the same. So we'll then continue. Uh, you can either again skip through to upload your file, but this is where they tell you that any images within the fold within the file need to be of a high resolution. So 300 dots per inch will give you the best clarity for printing. Embed your fonts in your PDF file. Whenever you print a file or save a file from any of the design programs, you have the option to embed fonts. This is to make sure that when the, the uh, file is printed, you don't have any problems with the fonts coming out in weird shapes or overlapping each other. And they, they give you a bit of help here on show me how. 
file types they will tell you what you can use they don't, they can they say you can use any word processing processing program but i have to say i've always used pdf and never had problems i've not tried a word file so be prepared to maybe have to go back and do it again if you if you have one and you have a few problems there continue and then you get to the point where you can upload your file okay so now we're going to upload the file I'm going to upload one I've already done because I can delete it again afterwards and you can drag and drop um, the file straight into this particular process. Now this might take a little while so I'm going to pause while it does so so you don't have to hang around watching a blank screen. There you go, it was actually quicker than I thought but it shows you the proof down below and you can zoom out so you can see the whole page in one hit and then you can scroll down and check your pages as you go through so i have it on single pages so that any coloring doesn't come through etc and i know this one's all right so once you've checked that it's okay you click i have reviewed and approved and then you save and continue and then you get to exactly the same process for the cover file and this is where I said to you, you have the choice of uploading a front and a back cover file or a full cover file like we can do in Amazon. The I always go for the, the full cover file because I've already set it up for Amazon. And apart from maybe adjusting the size very slightly, I can use the same file here. I also use Photoshop. Um, I can use InDesign, though I, I have an old version and it's not that great these days. Again, Illustrator is pretty good. I also use Affinity's Photo, which is the cheaper version of Photoshop and an extremely good value. Uh, right, so we're going to up upload a full cover file. Save and continue. And they go through the same process again, and you can check sizes and exactly the same thing in that you have to have your main images within these margins. Uh, you have a spine and you have a bleed area. And you also go through for how they set it up if for, sorry, if you want a um, fold cover around a, a hardback book. And the same mention about 300 dpi to remind you to get your images good resolution. Re embed your fonts again and use the right file type. So we're going to pull the cover in and this one will take a little while because it is a very large file. So again, I will pause and come back. And here we go, it's uh, arrived. And you can straight away see if there's any issues with your print disappearing off the bleed line, which is um, really handy. I mean, that, that'll be fine because the cut line is along the red, but the rest fits in fine. So having reviewed and approved, we save and continue once more. And then you get to the details that are going to go into the book. As you can see, the title's already in there. The subtitle is going to be the same as what I have on Amazon. So I can just copy and paste that across. Um, the publisher name is already in there because that's what's set up in the registration. A publication date will be today. Um, no edition number, no edition description. The default description, again, I'm going to copy and paste that across from Amazon, but I do mention in a, a book that I've got out on Kindle that the description and keywords and niche and all of that kind of thing is worth researching at the beginning and having a separate file set up for each book or even a, a general file if you want to refer to various keywords for different books, because it will save a lot of time in, at this point, having to stop and think, what do you want to put and what keywords should be used? And if you're publishing a lot of books in one hit, it just speeds the whole process up. Trust me, I have found this out from um, hard, hard labor in trying to do this. So uh, book descriptions in, and then we save and continue. So for the contributor name, um, I've already got mine set up, but the first time you do this, you will have to fill that in and then it gets recorded and saved for future reference. We're going to be the, the author. You can add other contributors if there are other people helping out with the book. This section for about the author 
is something I have in a file which I just copy and paste in each time I do it. If you do more than one version of the same book, this bit is all copied across. So you don't have to keep doing it, but it's useful to have this kind of stuff in a separate file. I usually keep a, a text file just open with this kind of information there. So I can just literally copy and paste in when I need it. So we save and continue again. Now here's where you're going to choose your categories and the audience that you're going to go for. So in this instance, it's it's children. We're going to go for the age six to eight because it's slightly more appropriate for this book. You're going to choose English unless you are a different language. It'll be nonfiction and it does make a difference to the categories that you can choose from, as you can see, if I just quickly change, if I switch across to nonfiction, it all changes. And the first one we're going to pick is animals and kids because this is a book about coloring cats and we're going to choose the cats and then we're going to add the categories based on whatever best fits to be honest so in this instance i'm going to go for arts and crafts because it's a coloring book and we'll have art techniques uh, we'll choose a couple more and um, and really it's down to you what sort of categories you want as i've said so we can go down and check through. So I'll have games and activities, which will be activity books. And one more. Let's go for art and architecture for kids. And art techniques and drawing. Okay, so that's the categories. Next is keywords. And as I've said, I keep them in a separate file. So I will just go to that file and copy and paste them in. When the file wants to open up. Okay. So that makes it so much quicker than sitting there pondering at the time, but you can, of course, just enter them in as you go. So we save and continue from there. And then we're going to set the price for the book. Now here it breaks it all down for you, gives you a minimum um, royalty, it sets a price that it thinks is acceptable, which I always put up because I like to earn a little bit more than 20 odd cents. Uh, so I've up mine to 650, which gives me 140 per book, and I'm happy with that. The printing cost and the retail and distribution are broken down there for you. And this is the point where I'm going to, I, I copy these figures across to a, an Excel sheet so I can keep an eye on them as sales grow, hopefully. <laughs> Save and continue. Rights and other information is pretty much no and no every time, unless you're certain that it's an old book you're re replicating. Um, and in which case you would put yes, but so far everything I've done has come under the nose. Save and continue. I have no editorial reviews. When, when you get them, you can add them in here. And at this point, it asks you about ISBN for the books. I've never bought an ISBN and I don't intend to for the time being because they are quite expensive. And for these kind of books, I don't believe it's necessary to spend a lot of money on that sort of thing. So I go with the free ones with Amazon and with Barnes and Noble Press. I have no problem with them putting their name on the, the publication. So mine's there as well. It's not a problem to me. That gives their ISBN number. This is not the same as Amazon and you can't interchange them. Save and continue there. And then you can review everything. This is the summary of everything we've done. So we have the letter size book. It's in black and white interior with a color um, outside. Uh, the book information and everything else is all listed there for you to check. And you can at this point as well, if you wanted, make a copy of that or print that page. So you have that information. And that's as easy as it is, really. Um, you click on put on sale. And that's the final put on sale, which I'm not going to do because uh, it can take a little while to go through and you can't delete it again until it has. So 
uh, I won't go that far, but it's literally press that button and then that's it and wait for anything up to 72 hours before it is available for the public. It's usually quicker than that, I have found. So I hope you found that useful. My name is Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables. Uh, we'll, I intend to do others um, based on the same sort of thing. Uh, talk to you again soon.